hospital, if you took your child to the hospital for a whooping call for pertussis or something like that, and the doctor said, we gotta keep them. Um, you know, they're not well. And you know, it's a pretty scary thought. Well, the child goes to the hospital and if, you're, if a kid keeps coughing and coughing and coughing, can't keep them food down. So they end up putting the IV in to make sure that they have fluids. And then the next thing you know, the doctor says, well, we have to maintain their strength. We're gonna have to feed them. That's when they decide to do tube feeding. Um, tube feeding goes by many different names. It's called enteral nutrition. They call it the lodge feeding or just basic tube feeding. Um, the most popular reason for even getting a, a tube feed is to maintain a person's nutrition. And um, a lot of times it's just a measure that's taken if a person is admitted into the hospital or into the ICU or anything like that. So tube feeding is very basic. All it includes is placing the tube, feeding through the tube, and then removing the tube. So it's really not as scary as a lot of people think that it is. This is just a graph to show some of the statistics of the reasons that a, a person would need a tube feeding or a powder. Something like the swallowing dysfunction, they have like an anatomy problem, their throats are not made normal, and they need assistance in getting food down. Well, they place the tube just to make sure that they have it. Failure to thrive would be your, um, that's the, the child that's not able to gain weight for whatever reason it could be. Severe reflux with aspiration. That's, you know, kids vomit and then if the food comes back up, sometimes it goes into the lungs and you don't want that to happen. Post-surgery or intensive care me measures. Those are all very popular, most popular reasons to tube feed. Um, placing the tube is very simple. They'll take like a, a little string, it looks like a string, and you kind of measure it if you want to go through the nose or through the mouth. You measure from um, the insertion point. You go behind the ear and measure it all the way down to where you want the tube to be measured and placed to fit down into it. You don't want it into the lungs, but even though I'm holding my hand right here on me, this would be like on a child, but on an adult, you go all the way down to the belly button. So you measure it down all the way down to what's called the xiphoid process, which is this little piece right in between your breastbone. Um, once they get that in, then they'll take like a stethoscope. Once it's taped to the face, take a stethoscope and a, a syringe with some air, push it through, hold the stethoscope on the stomach to make sure that the air is escaping into the stomach to make sure that the tube is in the right spot. Okay, once that's done, you let the doctor know. The doctor says, okay, the nurse is verified it's good. We'll feed them. There's two ways to feed through a feeding tube. It'll either be a bolus, which is getting a large amount of food through um, very quickly, or a continuous, which is something like a drip. It just kind of goes in very slowly until they say, okay, no more. Um, the tube stays in for as long as the doctor says that it needs to stay in. So that could be until the kid gets a surgery to have a permanent feeding tube placed, or until um, they're healthy again, they can drop out. But to take it out, it's very easy. You just untape it. Make sure you don't feed them for like uh, three to six hours before pulling the tube. Grab it. I'm just kind of demonstrating my nose. That's the most popular way. They don't really like to go mouth oral. You just grab it and just pull it out. And a lot of times, you know, the parents are like, oh my God, I, I can't, I can't take it. It's really not um, that scary of an issue. It's actually a life-sustaining and life-saving measure. So I hope that the information that I gave you was um, helpful in helping you to understand and if someone was to mention tube feeding in the future, it's not so scary. It's kind of like something that you've heard about. You'll probably be eager to see, you know, what is this about.